Wow. Welcome. Ms. Judith here. We're live. I'm going to continue a little bit uh, with the breathing brush practice that I was working with last week. Um, thank you for coming to um, watch my live stream. I've had a really great week in the studio. Um, I've been painting up a storm. And what's been happening is I've actually been using my breathing brush practice as a way to um, warm up. Yeah, it's a warm up practice. So uh, I've really been enjoying it. And I've uh, there's still a lot of curiosity in my little head about the breathing brush and how it applies to uh, my art making. But um, I mean, that's going to come down the pipe, I think, really. Um, things, the way things sort of go with me in my practice is I get curious about stuff. I got to try it out. I got to feel if it's a fit for me. And then some stuff, I'll incorporate it into my practice and other stuff. Yeah, well, I'll let somebody else practice that because not everything's a fit. And um, you just got to find out what's right for you. So this uh, practice channel, like my um, series of studio practice, it's about the process and it's about the curiosity and it's about, um, well, I just got to wonder what would happen if, yeah. And that's enough to give me the impetus to kind of go forward with this exploration. Because I think a lot of my art practice is driven by curiosity and exploration. And uh, I guess in a way it's, it's, that's part of the reason I've always <laughs> resisted the process of, um, yeah, restricting my practice to one thing, which tends to be a, uh, encouraged to really develop a professional style or artistic voice. I've always been very more interested in other stuff. So um, I don't know, I may give that practice a shot of restricting my my practice of actually making art to certain subject matters or I don't know, probably not. We'll see. I'll have to figure out how I'm going to move forward with that. I think I have an artistic voice, honestly. I just haven't um, packaged it correctly for, uh, yeah, whatever. At any rate, um, that's kind of neither here nor there. Uh, I want to talk about the breathing brush and I'm going to get to Zen circles today because I've been having some fun with Zen circles and I've also been practicing a little bit of calligraphy um, with the breathing brush. And that's, that's actually really interesting to me. Um, so uh, let's just get, I'm going to get the paint on my brush now. And uh, I'm using fluid acrylics with this. And I have this little bottle um, this is an old stevia, liquid stevia bottle. Uh, so I've got water in here, mostly a little bit of uh, glazing liquid. That's good. It allows me to have make my paint a little more liquidish. And uh, I'm loading it up on my brush. I find um, it's interesting to see how much fluid I need. Um, on the brush to allow it to flow because I find the flow is really important with this. So, oh yeah, I'm ready. But I'm gonna get my camera over to the new gooseneck clamp again. So uh, yeah, that's just gonna be um, an ongoing thing with me because until I get to the point where, uh, yeah, I can figure out how to, uh, I don't know, um, manage this without getting the webcam over to the gooseneck clamp. I don't know. I'm going to have to get an in-house tech person to deal with it for 
for the time being, you're going to have to put up with my technical prowess. <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid. I'll move the clip. I'm moving the video, the webcam over to my uh, gooseneck clamp. And I think I. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we did it. See if we can. Um... Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to um, gradually get less and less. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, that's not square, but whatever. Let me move it over. Sort of. Let's do more this way. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. Um, I'm painting on my drafting table, and my drafting table is not perfectly level. It's at an angle, a slight one. So when I make the gooseneck clamp level, it, this becomes beveled. Um, anyways, I think that's okay. We're good with that. Um, yeah, we're good with that. So, breathing brush. Let's, I'm going to review this. Um, my practice of the breathing brush. It's a, um, a meditation um, <clears throat> technique. And I have studied meditation. I've studied Zen meditation. Um, but this is a modification because in Zen, the, usually the teaching is that you... Um, focus on one thing. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on a whole pile of stuff. I'm focusing on the brush, the movement. I'm focusing on uh, my posture. I'm focusing on um, the position of the brush. I'm focusing on my breathing in, breathing out. There's a whole whack of stuff I'm focusing on when I'm doing this. And, you know, it's funny when you think up something, you come up with something. And you think it's going to be really simple. This is my experience teaching. I come up with some idea. I think it's going to be really simple. It's not. But, um, yeah. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, I'll pull this down a bit. So, breathe out, press. Breathe in, lift. Breathe out, press. Breathe in, lift. And I'm going to do that um, as I'm gradually pulling my brush across the page. Um, and if anybody wants to follow along with this practice, just be aware that um, I'm left-handed. So I'm going, I start at the left and pull to the right. That just makes sense to me with the way my, the dynamics of my handedness work. However, um, let's review this for a right-handed person. I'm going to be doing it this way. Okay. But for me, I don't pull my brush. I don't want to shove it in to the stroke. So I'm doing it this way. So you just go ahead and turn it around for whatever hand you are using. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Deep breathing. I know I said this last week, but it's just so true. Deep breathing will allow you to focus more clearly. It gives your a brain more oxygen. Um. So let's start with deep breathing. And sometimes uh, when I'm teaching my students um, uh, drawing, I'll have them do a dry run. So without even touching the paper, I'm doing what I'm intending to do just to see how it works. And then I can, you know, commit myself to actually messing up the paper. This is just a piece of eight and a half by 11 printer paper. It's not expensive, but Anyways, not a big deal. Press, breathe out. Pull up, breathe in. I'm exaggerating here. I'm also hyperventilating because I'm doing it too fast. I don't breathe that fast. I think uh, if I were actually, when I actually do this um, practice, I'm um, just following the breath as it normally comes in and out. 
I'm not trying to make it go fast. I was just doing that to explain the in and out in the movement. So let's try it again. I'm going to uh, actually start um, listening to my natural breathing rhythm now. And uh, if you are going to join me in this, um, always just follow your own rhythm. Yeah, follow your own rhythm. Because everybody has a natural breathing rhythm that's appropriate for your body. And some people do it more quickly than others. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm, gonna, I, I'm just going to listen to my breathing in and out. And when I breathe out, when I start my out breath, I'm going to press. And then I'm going to start. Wow, look at that. Each one is so different. Yeah. Mm, that was that was very grounding and calming, which is good in a pandemic. Hey, um, this these are some of the things um, that have come to me over the week of fooling around with this idea. Um, and... Uh, and truth be known, there I have been studying various um, meditation uh, techniques and teachings. I've studied Qigong. I've studied um, teachers who speak about breathing for health. Um, these things interest me. But one of the things, and I can't remember where, what teacher I got this from, but... Um, if it was uh, the Buddhist meditation teacher or a wellness teacher or a Qigong teacher, I don't know where it came from. But um, one of the things somebody pointed out to me is uh, breathing has a certain point where it changes direction. There's a certain point in your breathing where it changes direction. And you're not um, directing or consciously controlling the breath, you're just watching it, observing it. So there's a certain point. So if I uh, am aware that there's a certain point where my breath will change direction and it, there's sort of like, I'm breathing out. And then there's a certain point where the out breath just naturally bottoms out. 
And then there's a pause. And then the in-breath starts. And then there's a certain point where the in-breath tops out. And then there's a pause. It changes direction again and turns into the out-breath. Fascinating, eh? So uh, if I'm paying attention to my breathing, maybe I can uh, focus also my attention on um, finding the pause in my breathing and watching it change direction. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting to me. Um, the other thing is I was loading my breath up with my breath, my brush up with a paint every, uh, after every row. So um, what I was doing is I was all watching my breath while I was loading the paint, but I wasn't trying to connect the movement of the brush to loading it up or anything. I was just putting some, a little bit more paint onto the brush. And the other thing I noticed with this is as I'm moving my arm this way, if my arm is resting on the table, there's a certain amount of inertia because it, I have to have a sort of steady movement. And if I'm trying to move my hand slowly, um, the uh, connection, the inertia uh, from the friction of my arm resting on the table will cause it to jerk. Um, if I try to move slowly, uh, the inertia on the friction causes my hand to jerk. There's a certain point where I can have enough force to move it slowly. So um, I have to figure out what's appropriate for me. I have remarkable capacity to be aware of my body in space. So for me, um, holding my hand above the table allows me to control the movement of the brush without worrying about the friction of my arm on the table. Um, if uh, I know not everybody is blessed with that capacity. So uh, what I have noticed just now, oh, wow, miracle, is if I press my arm into the table and put a fair amount of force into moving my arm across the table, um, I can get a steady um, movement without the friction of my arm onto the table grabbing me. So I can explore those two things. Now, um, you wouldn't think that uh, so much attention could go into a simple, it's not that simple, is it? But it, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me, I think. One of the things that I find fascinating is um, just the connection of my art-making process to my meditation practice. And um, allowing it to um, evolve and, and um, perhaps inform uh, the energy and the essence of my artwork as I move forward with this. But uh, like anything, it's, you, you know, you start off slowly and simply, well, I'd sort of, and, uh, and see where it goes. So, um, yeah. So I think that's enough of the breathing brush exercise. I'm going to explore a little bit um, about Zen circles now, because that's another practice that fascinates me. And um, so with uh, my understanding of Zen circles, now this is a Japanese practice, and I believe there's another word for it. It's Enso. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Probably not. But uh, my understanding is um, after meditation, the artist focusing on the breath will land the brush and make a circle on the out breath. I have uh, been practicing that, and I'm still um, fooling around with the concept a lot. Because uh, what I find uh, with my brush on the paper, with the ink that I'm using, or it's not ink actually, it's a fluid acrylic. It's a uh, primary cyan if you're interested. 
I have, um, I find that for me to breathe out for one circle, uh, that's a bit of a challenge, depending on the size of the circle, because I find that when I'm making a round circle with um, my brush, there's a whole lot of other stuff that I'm thinking about. And um, connecting that movement to the out breath, all of that stuff to get sort of condensed in that one art out breath. Yeah, maybe if I breathe in really deeply, I don't know. Um, but um, for me, when I'm doing circles, when I'm teaching students how to make a circle, I always teach, and this is very powerful, even when I'm teaching very young children who struggle with um, the action of making a circle. When I teach people that you're not actually making the circle with your hand or your fingers or even the wrist, uh, it, it's actually if you focus the circle in your shoulder and imagine you're making a circle in the shoulder that will automatically allow you to make a, a lovely circular um, movement. And uh, that will also improve the quality of the circles that come out of the end of your pencil or your brush. So um, that being said, whenever I'm teaching circle to students, I always have them sit up straight and uh, feet flat on the ground. So I'm aware of my body. I'm aware of my seat. I'm sitting on a chair. And I am um, grounded and balanced. So um, when I'm making the movement, I'm um, moving my brush in space. Now I'm watching the webcam and I'm looking at this and I don't think that this webcam will be able to show you my brush very well. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to yank it out of the gooseneck clamp and hold it with my right hand while I'm doing that. But that'll be awkward because then I won't be holding the paper. I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. If I hold my hand here, I could do it like that. Oh, there's always some technical thing. Oh, well, it's a technical adventure. Anyways, um, yeah. Let's think about uh, Zen circles. Uh, and uh, we're letting you watch what I do. See if I can get the breath. Hmm. Hmm. Now you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's just try. Breathe out. Oh, direction. Just so you know. Oh, when I do this, I go counterclockwise. I find that as a left-handed artist, when I draw and, well, not necessarily draw, it doesn't matter as much, but with my brush, when I go counterclockwise, I feel I have more control over the stroke. Um, I'm not entirely sure with Zen Circle practice if it matters. Uh, but I suspect the majority of Zen circle artists are right-handed and you know what? I guess we can just go with whatever direction is natural. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I've already had a disclaimer when I started this in the beginning that um, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just making it up as I go. <laughs> uh, I can't hold the paper. I don't know. Let's see. Problem. Paper moved. Huh. Oh, 
Oh, maybe I could uh, move this, that, that gooseneck clam and wrestle with this thing again. Let's see if I can get this down here. Okay, I think that might work better. I can hold the paper. Try again. Technical issues. Okay, I'm sitting up straight. I'm aware of my spine. I When I do this, I do not rest my hand on the table. Mm, my drafting table has a lip, which uh, doesn't make my hand resting on the table convenient for me at any rate. Breathing in deeply. Huh. All right. I always find it's when I'm coming up that I get this jigginess. I have that when I start and I'm going around, it's sweet. And then when I come up, I get this jigginess. Now, um, maybe I'm thinking this too much, but the jigginess, eh, not so, you know, I just, I don't know. The other thing I've been noticing about the brush practice is that when I'm drawing a circle, I'm drawing it twice. I'm drawing it on the outside edge and I'm drawing it on the inside edge. Oh yeah, that's way too much, but uh, yeah, I guess, whatever. I can't help it. I notice stuff like that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I notice stuff like that. I don't know. I just, uh, I get noticed and stuff like that. Then I get curious about it. Oh, okay, stop. I'm making another circle. Focused. See there? Try again. Oh, hold it up again. Jigga, jigga, jigga. Okay, I gotta get some more of my glazing liquid solution into my palette. Okay. That's a nice one. Okay. I'm going to try one the other way, just out of curiosity. And this is counterclockwise. Oh, no, that's that's not counterclockwise. That's counterclockwise. Huh. Now, you know, I have left right confusion. Clockwise and counterclockwise. That's hard stuff for me to remember which way is which. And left and right. Oh, man, who thought that up? When I was studying Tai Chi, my long suffering Tai Chi instructor would tell me to step out with my left foot and he'd always look at me and say, Judith, the other left. And I'd go, oh yeah, I'm on there. I'd take a step out with my other left foot. Uh, oddly enough, I have two lefts and two rights, it would seem. Or the perpetual one in front, whatever. That's clockwise. I remember this is counterclock. Let's see if I go the other way. If it's better. Ah. Oh, yeah, it is better. See, look at that. Counterclockwise. I knew counterclockwise would be better for me. That way for counterclockwise. Oh. That one looks happy. Almost looks like a little bonnet. <laughs> okay, I bet you any uh, money that uh, Zen Circle practitioners probably don't put little smiley, smiley faces in the middle. But, um, yeah, it's my Zen Circle. I can do that if I want. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Counterclockwise. I'm OK 
okay with it. Oh, I'm gonna try making a spiral with it. <sighs> Breathing out. Breathing out on the whole thing. And you know what? I think sometimes people do Zen circles that are really big, with big brushes. They must have really long arms and really deep lungs. That's all I can say. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was going to try a spiral. Let me try again. I need another tip. I end up recycling all these. Okay. I'm going to try spiral now. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was sweet. Okay, that was fun. Oh, I got to show you. I've been practicing the word peace. So I'm going to I'm going to write peace backwards now because I'm left-handed. I write my letters backwards because my brush moves more easily with that. So um, what that means is I got <laughs> I got to remember the order of the letters and uh, several times when I've been practicing and I manage, and it's just a short little word like peace, right? But I've managed to misspell it a whole pile of times. But spelling, oh man, when I was a kid, learning to spell, that's hard for me. Yeah. Spelling, okay. I can't promise you when I do this that I'll get the letters in the right place, but yeah. Maybe it'll be really entertaining to watch someone wa draw a piece backwards. P E A C E. Okay, I'll start with an E. That's counterclockwise. Oh, look at all the drips coming out of my brush here. See that? I think that that's too much drippiness on my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of that off. I don't know if this um, webcam is going to be able to keep up to my... Oh, my brush is dripping again. I'm just going to make an E. P E A C E P E A C. Next one is a C. Well, look at that. It's about to drip. See if I can make my brush thirsty and suck up some of that drip. No. This watercolor technique doesn't work as well with the acrylic paint. Oh well, whatever. P E A C E P. Oh, A. A is next. A's are fun. Um, when I was uh, just so you know, when I was fooling around with my calligraphy, I was thinking the uh, calligraphy has thick and thin strokes, and in my brush call calligraphy, when I was trying to figure out if I could attach my breathing to my calligraphy. I was thinking the out stroke would be the breath out and the thin stroke would be the breath in. I still haven't, um, I'm still fooling around with that concept. A. A's are lovely. I was making my A's a little lower. Isn't that a pretty stroke? Yeah, I like the shape of that. Oh, I so want to turn that into a penguin, but I won't. P E A. Oh, I'm going to run out of room for the P. Huh. Maybe next week I'll fit it all on the page. P E A C. P E A C. P E. Oh, E. Yeah, look at that. Look at all the the flash of light jumping off of uh, this is really lovely, isn't it? Wow. Look, I got a little jigginess here. Yeah. 
now I'm totally not going to put the feet, fit the piece right, the P on my ease. I've got an ease. E A S E. Oh, maybe I'll turn this into ease. Because my S won't, my P won't fit, but I can turn this into an S. Let's see if I can. I'll do peace next week. This week I'm doing ease. If I was doing an S, I'd try to do it in one stroke, but yeah, whatever. E A S E. Ease. Oops. Technical stuff. E A S E. Hmm. That was fun. Oh, I just got blue paint all over my drafting table. Draft. I got it. Okay. That's enough fun for today. I did some calligraphy. I did a spiral. We did the breathing brush. We did some Zen circles. Maybe I should shouldn't call them Zen circles because I'm probably not actually doing the Zen circle practice as is um, developed by that Zen circle tradition. Mine are kind of I'll just call them what they are. Brush circles. Breathing brush circles. I'm still working on attaching the breath to the calligraphy. What I'm finding is that um, when I'm doing the letters, I don't have enough brain space to focus on the breath too. And that may very well be why in the tradition of Zen, they say focus on one thing. So, um, anyways, I'll see how it goes. I'll see how it goes. This is, it's been an interesting practice to me. Uh, and it's been fun and engaging. So that's probably enough for today. I'll have to type in the word ease. E-A-S-E. Ease. Yeah. Ease. <laughs> I'm just flowing with what flows off the tip of my brush. Yeah. Ease. Oops. Ease. <laughs> that was way too fun. Anyways, for all my fabulous viewers, thanks for watching. This was so fun. And, um... Don't know what's going to happen next week. Maybe I'll get to my mandala. Which, you know what? It's a breathing brush mandala. Maybe I ought not to use the word mandala. Or just use it very loosely. As I'm going to figure out how to apply it to my own process. But, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Anyways. Next Friday... And maybe one day I'll actually figure out how to do a live stream and have it streamed onto my website. But for right now, uh, it's going on to my YouTube channel. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Technology is fabulous. And then technology can be a uh, real-time sync. And um, when I'm doing super fun stuff like brushwork, I get a little bit... Um, reluctant to spend a whole lot of time jigga jigga with my technology so thank you for your patience and uh oh yeah listen i'm sitting here talking to you and you can't see my beautiful little face let's see if i can say hello to you <laughs> here i am that was so fun thanks for um watching wow and if you actually make it to the end of this wow so great yeah. Um, anyways, we'll see what comes down the pipe with this. It's got my curi curiosity. This breathing brush thing has got my curiosity. There's a word, but I can't. A uh, peaked? Tweet? I can't. Yeah. I'll have to look it up on my uh, Gmail to figure out how to spell that. Or if it's, I'm pretty sure it's a word, but 
Anyways, I don't know how to say it, but that's beside the point. I'm distracting myself again. I'm saying goodbye to you. Yeah. <laughs> Fun stuff, kids. So uh, listen, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Okay? Bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, and I'm going to end my stream. I got it. Bye. End it? Yeah. Yeah, bye, bye.